Hello and welcome back to SaaS Bootcamp, week four, video five. In this video, we're gonna talk about different types of mergers. Now, if you recall, in the previous video, we talked about one-to-one -one mergers and one-to-many mergers, depending upon how often that key variable is replicated in each of the two data sets that we are merging. But that's really only one way to classify mergers. There is a second and perhaps a more comprehensive way to classify these data sets, these merge procedures. And I want to demonstrate that using a Venn diagram here on this whiteboard. Bear with me as I try to draw this with my fingers. Okay, let's say we have two data sets, data set A and data set B. Data set A has individuals one, two, three, and four, and individuals five and six. Data set B has individuals five and six, and it also has individuals seven, eight, nine, and 10, right? So when you merge data set A and data set B, what you want in your final output depends on what you're looking for, right? And you can make certain choices when you do this. The pre ones I demonstrated in the previous video, the one-to-one -one merge and the one-to-many -to -one, one merge are a good example of what is called a full join or an outer join. I'll try and write this here. A full join or an outer join is called full join because you want all of the individuals in that merge statement, both from data set A and data set B. So if you do a full join for this Venn diagram, you will have individuals one through 10 in the data set. But that's not your only option. You can choose to delete certain rows or certain people depending on which data set they are coming from. For example, you can do what is called an inner join. An inner join will delete all of the rows in data sets A and B as long as they don't have an overlap. So if you do an inner join, it will only hold on to individuals five and six. Individuals one through four, individuals seven through 10 will be deleted because they are only present in one data set, not in both of the data sets that you have merged. So that's one choice. You can also do what is called a left join or a left merge. If you do the left merge, what you're doing is you're basically holding on to all the rows or peoples in the left data set of the merge and not the right data set of the merge. So all the people in the left data set are individuals one through six. So this holds on to individuals five and six, which are actually in both data sets, but the individuals that are only in the right data set, seven, eight, nine, and 10, they get deleted if you do a left merge. You can also do what is called a right merge or a right join which will hold on, which will do the opposite of the left join. It will only hold on to individuals that are present in the right data set and any individuals that are present in the left but not the right data set get automatically deleted. So those individuals that are present in both left and right data sets get retained if you do a right merge. So you will have individuals five through 10 if you do a right merge. So essentially these are four different types of merge outputs you can request from SAS every single time you do a merge statement. And very often when you're working in health outcomes research, you don't want a full or an outer join. You want to choose one of these other options. So for example, you want uh, individuals that are on a certain medication and individuals that are adults, right? And you have those in two different data sets. So when you merge them, you're not looking for an outer join, you're looking for an inner join. Or you want some other combination of these uh, two data sets that you're looking for, depending on whether that is full or inner or left or right. The one note I will add about left join and right join is that those are completely arbitrary definitions and uh, something can be the left join or the right join merely dependent on whether that data set is in the left side of the merge statement or the right side of the merge statement, right? In this Venn diagram that is. In a data step, when you write that merge statement with the names of the data sets, it doesn't really matter if it is a left join or a right join. Uh, we will talk more about how this can be incorporated within SAS next week. But for now, just know that the words left and right are completely arbitrary and they are basically determined based on which data set is in the left side of this Venn diagram. That's it. No other relationship to SAS at all. So now that we've seen different types of merges, let me go ahead and try to show you how to incorporate these different types of merge within SAS Studio. Okay. You should be seeing my SAS Studio screen now. So let, let me go ahead and demonstrate first the outer join. The previous example we saw in the previous video, the example we saw in the previous video with the one-to-many merge from merge one and merge three into merge 13, that was a good example 
of the out of join. So when you do a merge within a data set, the default option is to automatically do an outer or a full join. Now, you guys know, if you've been following this uh, course along for the past three weeks, that I don't like when things are basically just default. I would rather they be explicitly defined as being an outer join. So the way to explicitly define an outer join here is to say, I'm going to call my data set merge one three underscore one because it's doing the same thing as merge one three, which is the outer join. It's just going to be more explicit about it. Merge one, merge three. Sorry, I wrote my set statement here. I need merge statement, not set statement. By Benny ID. All right. All right. To explicitly verify that what you are getting out of this merge statement is an outer merge you can use what is called the in operator, okay? When you use the in operator within SAS, what you're trying to say is that, um, excuse me. Okay. What you're trying to say is th this in operator basically is like an indicator, right? You can use this indicator by defining it within that merge statement and then utilizing it within the body of your code uh, to then just determine if you want an outer join or an inner join or a left or a right join, whatever you want. So in this case, I'm going to say if A equals one or B equals one. So what this in statement did is it is creating an indicator called A because I've set that indicator to be equal to A and that indicator variable A, which is actually a hidden indicator. It's not actually a variable that you will see if you open the data set. If you open this data set merge 13 underscore one, you won't see a variable called A. It's just an indicator that's hidden behind the scenes. But that indicator will be set to one if a particular row is present in this first data set, right? And that indicator will be set and the indicator B will be set to one if that row is present in the merge three data set. So let me run this and show you guys what we're talking about. Check my log. I have five observations in merge one, 22 in merge three, and 23 observations. This is exactly like the example we did in the previous video. And when I look at my output, you'll see that this is an outer join, right? It is an, I know it is an outer join because the individual two, for example, that was present in the first data set, but not the second data set is in the data, is in this output data and individual six that was in the merge three data set, but not in the merge one data set is also in the output. So you know that everybody in the Venn diagram, whether or not they're in the overlapping portion of the Venn diagram has made it into the output data set. So this is an outer or a full join. Now, if you want to visualize what we've done with these indicators A and B, one easy way to do that is to just create these variables and set them to be equal to something else. So I'm going to create two dummy variables and I'm going to be making them equal to my indicators just so we can visually look at what this in command is doing and we can visually understand how these in uh, commands and the if then statements are then changing the nature of the merge. So you'll see here that the view A, which is the A indicator, is equal to one whenever a certain row is present in the first data set. So Benny ID one was present in the first data set. So he got a one. Benny ID one again was in the first data set. Benny ID one was in the first data set. Benny ID two was in the first data set, but they were not in the second data set. So view B is actually equal to zero here, right? Similarly, if you scroll down, you'll see that individual number six, that's not in the first data set. They got a value of zero for the A indicator, but they have a value of one for the B indicator. So you can utilize the A and B indicator variables that you've defined in your merge statement using simple if then statements to determine the nature of the output whether you want an outer merge or an inner merge or a left or a right join you can do that all through here um, and really i've used if a equals one or b equals one to delete the other words but i can to make it explicit i can always write then output here when i use my output i want to place that at the very end so i'm going to do this so, so now that we've seen how, how we can uh, write an outer join, you should be able to see how to do an inner join as well using this very same process. So I'm going to copy and paste this. Change my data set name. I'm going to call it 13A. Uh, I'm still merging data sets merge one and merge three. 
I'm still going to use my in statements to set indicator variables A and indicator variable B. Merging by Benny ID, uh, here I'm going to say only output the rows if a row is present both in the first data set and the second data set. That is, if they are present in the merge one data set and the merge three data set. Or in other words, if the indicator variable A equals one and the indicator B equals one. So let's see what this does. I can check my log. Now I went from five and 22 observations in each of the two data sets to only 18 observations in my output data set. And you'll see here that individual number one is in the data set, individual number two is not in the final data set. If similarly, we have individuals going up to five, individual number six is not in the data set. Why? Because this is an inner merge. So only those individuals present in both data sets are present in the output file. So individual two, who was only in the first data set, but not the second, gets deleted. Individual six, who was in the second data set, but not the first, they get deleted as well. And every single row remaining in this data set basically has indicator variable A equals one and indicator variable B equals one, meaning they are present in both the first data set and the second data set. That's what makes it an inner merge. So inner merges are useful when you are only interested in individuals that are present in both the data sets of interest. Remember, when we talk about a variable being, uh, a row being present in both data sets, we are only talking about it in terms of our index or key variable Benny ID, right? We want to make sure that index variable value of one or two or three or whatever it is that value is should be present in both data sets in order for this to be an inner merge. If it is present in either data set and you want it in your output data set, that's called an outer merge, right? So let me go ahead and show you what a left join looks like next. So if you want to implement a left join, you write the same exact piece of code, except now I'm going to change my data set name, except now I will say if A equals one, then output. Simple, that's the change. So what I'm doing now is I'm saying only output those rows which are present in the first data set. How do I identify that? Using the indicator variable A as defined using the in command right there in the merge state. So now I can check my log. I went from five and 22 observations to 19 observations in my output data set. And my output data set now has individuals one, two, three, four, and five, but not six. And you will remember that data set one, merge one, had individuals one, two, three, four, five, and did not have individual six. The right data set, merge three, actually did not have individual two, but it had individual six. So two is still in the final data set, right? Two is in the final data set because they were in the left data set. So their A indicator is equal to one, B indicator equals zero. Individual six is not in here because they were not in the left data set. Their view A indicator or the A indicator variable would have been equal to zero, but they got automatically deleted because of my if then command here. Right. So if I want to do the right join, then I will do the exact opposite of this. So merge, merge 13 C, let me copy and paste this code here. So I don't have to type it again. So if I want to, excuse me, I need a merge statement. So if I want to do a right join or a right merge, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say that make sure that row is in the second data set, merge three. And how do I do that? I have my in command with an indicator variable B. I'm gonna make sure that indicator, indicator variable is equal to one. These two lines of code here where we are visualizing those indicators A and B in the names of the variables view A and view B are really not needed. Uh, I'm doing this just to show you guys what this looks like behind the screens. Once you start getting used to doing outer and inner merges and left joins and right joins, you can go ahead and delete these. You don't need to visualize these variables every single time. All right, I hit run. Check my log as you should do every single time to look at the number of rows in your data set. We went from five and 22 observations, 22 observations in our final data set. Our output shows that we have individuals one, three, four, five, and six. So individual two that was in the left data set but not the right is actually being deleted out because this is a right merge. But individual six that was in the right data set and not in the left data set still gets retained in the final output. And you'll see here that view B is equal to one for every row in the data set because it's the right merge. 
but view A is equal to zero in some cases. So gender is missing for these people, but they are still in the data set because this is a right match. Um, as a general rule of thumb, when you are doing merges within SAS with healthcare claims data, never do a simple outer merge or especially never do an inner merge directly, excuse me. What you want to do is you want to decide which type of merge you prefer. For me, that has always been left join or a left merge. So every time I do a merge within SAS, I always prefer doing a left merge. So visually in my head, I know what rows are going to be in the data set and what variables are going to get added to my output data set and what rows should be deleted based on which row is in which data set, so and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, sticking to doing one type of merge every single time helps make this process in your mind more systematic, which means you're less likely to make errors. You can go ahead and switch between one type of merge and another if you're comfortable doing that, but I have found that sticking to one type makes you less likely to make errors and errors in merge statements are extremely common. You will not believe how many times we work on a project within our department and at the end of it, we find out, hey, something's wrong. These numbers don't look right or there is an error somewhere in the code and all that error gets traced back to a merge statement somewhere. Merges are very, very likely to throw errors because the log won't catch them and you will not identify which, in, which rows you want in your data set and which rows you don't want, especially when you're working with data sets that have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of rows, right? Um, so, so using one type of merge and then expecting how many rows you want to see in the output, da output data set, that's actually really helpful. Uh, and always double check your merge code press well. Every time you run merge, make sure you open your output data set, look at it and see if all the rows that you are interested in are present in there. The one final thing I will say with regard to merges is that um, it is helpful to do merges with the in command right here because it is um, it tells you explicitly what type of merge you are doing. But if you're not comfortable using the in command, there are alternates for doing that, right? And these are not very good. So I would not recommend using these uh, unless you have to, but it is another way that gives you acceptable results if you want to. So let's say I want to do merge one three d right uh, and i'm going to merge the same data sets we've been looking at so far merge one and merge three but this time instead of using an in command i am just going to use the variables that are already in the data set so for example i know that merge one has the gender variable merge three has the visit variable so when you merge these two data sets you know that one variable gender or visit will be missing if it is not present in that corresponding data set. So I can always create an outer or an inner or a left or right merge just based on those missing values. So I can say, for example, if gender is not equal to missing, then output. Right? And what this will do is this will say basically merge these two data sets. The default there is an outer merge, which means every row is retained and then only hold on to those rows where gender is not missing. Right? So let me comment this out. Let's look at the data set first, and then I will tell you what that command does. Excuse me, I wrote, I wrote set instead of merge. Let me run this again. There's my log. Okay, so now my output data set has 23 rows because it's an outer merge, right? This is the default. When you don't include any if then statements or indicators with the in state in command, you get the default output uh, outer merge, which has 23 rows. Now this has gender missing where gender is where the individual is not present in the first data set. And it has visit missing where the individual is not present in the second data set. So I can take advantage of those missing values on variables unique to each data set to do outer or inner merges. So if I write this command and if I say, if gender is not missing, then output, what it will do is it will delete individual six, right? So if gender is not missing is my way of saying, only hold on to those rows which are present in the second in the left data set or the first data set, which means do a left merge, right? So if you write this, you'll basically get a left merge where you've deleted individual six from this data set. 
If on the other hand, you want to flip that and you want to say, I want to write merge, you can say if visit equals missing, then output, sorry, if visit is not equals missing. Oh, I think I, I included both. Let me comment that out. Okay. So now if visit is not equal to missing, then output is basically your way of telling SAS, please do a write merge, which means don't include individual two who was missing in the merge three data set. Right? And if you want an inner merge, you can just write them both in there. So you can say if gender is not missing, and visit is not missing, only then I want you to output the data set, output the row into the final data set. So if you do it this way, then you basically defined an inner merge. Excuse me, I think I have an error. Typo. That is supposed to be an equal symbol, okay. Oh, I still have a typo. Well, I forgot, I forgot a period there. Man, I am full of typos today. Okay, check my log again. Five and 22 rows in each of the two data sets gives me 18 rows in my final data set. And that's an inner merge because both individual two and individual six are not in this final data set, right? That's an inner merge. So you can define your merges to be outer, inner, left or right based on variables that are unique to each data set. And that way you can identify the missing values but I really don't recommend doing this unless you are certain you, are, you know what you're doing. The reason I say that is because if you use this option and if you say, uh, depending on the value of gender and whether gender is missing or not, I want to define what rows in my data set. What if you have a data set where gender is missing for some people, even if they are present in the left data set, right? So the left data set has the, val has the variable gender, but what if some individuals are missing gender because of data entry problems or because you've got um, data that are a little messy, then you might not want to delete those individuals because they are in the left data set. They just happen to have missing gender values, right? So, so when a variable is missing is, is something that, that depends on the type and the quality and the nature of data you have. And most big data sets, which have hundreds of thousands of rows, will have missing values for almost every single variable at least one to two percent of the time, at least, right? And if your data are messy, it can be a lot, lot more than one or two percent of the time. So if you use these missing value and a variable that is unique to a data set to define inner or outer merges, you will end up with errors. So be very careful doing this. I would strongly recommend that as long as you're doing the merges, pick which type of merge you want to do and use these in equals command with an indicator to do, in my case, a left join every single time. If you prefer to do an inner join or an outer join explicitly, you can change it. But if you are, if you decide that left join is what you want to do, then I would stay away from right joins and just stick to one type of a join state. Uh, we will talk more about left joins and right joins and what kinds of implications these things have. And we will explore a second way to do merges in next week's SAS bootcamp when we talk about Proc SQL. For now, this is the last content video we are going to talk about in week four. So I hope this has been helpful. I will do another video explaining this week's homework before we wrap up this week's content.